You are welcome to this class, Comparative Public Administration of Post 405, Session 3 thereof. In Sessions 1 and 2, we looked at the evolution of Comparative Public Administration. We examined theoretical backgrounds in the study of Comparative Public Administration. In this session, we shall be looking at comparative public administration in practice. How does public administration flow in different jurisdictions? So you will recall that in the background, in the previous sessions, one and two, we dwell extensively on the socio-cultural, uh, I mean cross-cultural nature of comparative public administration. We also emphasized the ecology of public administration, the environment under which public administration exists, the political substructure actually determines the administrative superstructure that you put on it. So I want us to watch out for these elements as we go into comparative public administration in practice. Uh, let us start with public administration in the United Kingdom. Now, the four countries we'll be looking at had been carefully selected to reflect the different political systems that the dominant two political arrangements that uh, are overarching in political uh, structure. Now, you have federal states where there are two levels two or more levels of political authority, each dominant within its own sphere. We have the unitary system where there is this power is centralized and the subunits that exist under the central government derive their power and authority from the central government. So for the unitary system of government, we will look, we'll be looking at the United Kingdom will also be looking at France. For the other, the federal arrangement, we will be looking at comparative public administration in the United States of America and Nigeria. So we are starting with the United Kingdom. The background to the United Kingdom, which we need to know so that along the line we'll be able to see how the ecology how the, uh, the political background of this country dictates the public administration that is erected upon it. The United Kingdom is an integration of four territories, England, Scotland, the Wales, and Ireland, now called Northern Ireland. England, of all these four that came together to form the United Kingdom, England is dominant. It has four-fifths of the population. England has existed for over 1,000 years after the 1,060 Norman conquest. The institutions, the political institutions in England or in the United Kingdom consists of the crown, that is the queen, or the king, that is the monarchy itself, the parliament, and the judiciary. Now, we, like I said, the United States Kingdom is a unitary state. And again, I repeat, the element 
of a unitary state is that power is centralized in a central government. The sub units under the central government takes its power. It takes its direction and control from the central government. And like we may know, Britain or the United Kingdom operates an unwritten constitution. There is no codified set of laws. The, their constitutions are scattered in different codes. Now the administration or the administrative structure in the United Kingdom. Political power is centralized in the parliament in London. You must have come across the dictum that the parliament in Britain is powerful. That there is nothing it cannot do except change a man to a woman or vice versa. The meaning of this is that the parliament, the legislature in the United Kingdom is powerful, is dominant. Because there is a fusion of powers of executive with the legislature. The executive members of cabinet are also members of the parliament. So this makes the parliament in London very dominant and very, very powerful. There is a centralized government, i.e. there is a central government in London, which is the cabinet, headed by a prime minister. This central government is composed of the various ministries or department of government that are that reports to the prime minister and uh, which is the central political authority in the United Kingdom. Local authorities derive their powers from the central government. The subunits below the central government are not, uh, they don't have autonomous powers. They derive their powers from the central government, unlike in the federal system, as we shall see when we get to federal states. Let us uh, take a look at the British Parliament. It has the monarchy, the crown as the head. At different times, it could be the king, it could be the queen. At present, there is a queen there as the titular head. She is the ceremonial head of government, uh, of head of, uh, head of state. That's, uh, we must understand that the head of state is titular, is ceremonial, that the head of government is the prime minister which exercises uh, actual executive powers. Then the British Parliament is bicameral. You have the House of Commons and the House of Lords. Like I said earlier on, there is fusion of executive and legislative powers. We must also take cognizance of the principle of collective responsibility. There is no individual ministerial responsibility. The, car the cabinet are collectively responsible for the activities of government, whether it succeeds or it fails. So they are all collectively responsible to parliament. Government functions have extended to housing, education, environment, transportation, and social welfare. Now, the, uh, the, the, the government function in the United Kingdom, we are used to the traditional uh, functions of government, which is maintenance of law and order, i.e. security, and the welfare of the people. Over the years, particularly in the last 150 years or thereabouts, the activities of government has transcended that. This is applicable in the United Kingdom. The government or public service runs transportation service, they do housing schemes, they run education, and so on. In addition, to the, the mainstream 
civil service, the White Hall or the Westminster, is what is under the Prime Minister and the various uh, members of cabinet in the different departments of government, like education, like health, and so on and so forth. They form the main stream of the civil service. There are non-departmental agencies also, which exist side by side with the mainstream of the civil service. They exist for activities in which government is interested, but does not want direct involvement. Examples of this include the British Gas Corporation, the British Airways, the British Railways, the Post Office, and so on and so forth. These bodies have chairmen and boards appointed by the government. Other features of these non-departmental agencies include corporate status. They are uh, created by law, enabling statutes. Their composition of powers and functions are derived from such statutes that created them. They, are la they largely operate independently. They do not go through the whole hog of bureaucracy because they are utility, uh, mostly organizations. They are controlling financial interests by the public. It is the public who have the uh, maximum financial interest in these uh, public operations. Let's look closely at the British civil service. Civil servants are those employed in a civil capacity other than political or judicial officers whose remuneration are paid out of money provided by parliament. In the intro, when we were in session one and two, I said we must draw a distinction between the public service and the civil service. The public service is the large, the larger structure of government that transcends all the arms of government, people, the legislature, the executive, the judiciary. Those who work in this uh, larger structure, are, they are all public servants. Justices, judges are public servants. The people in the military service, security services, they are public servants. But the civil service is restricted. And this is why this uh, definition had been provided. Before the middle of 19th century, the British civil service was not only based on patronage, it was corrupt and inefficient. Then came the North Coast and the Trevelyan Reports of 1953, which reformed the British civil service. The features of that reform include a competitive recruitment process. You have to uh, do a written exam and compete before you enter. Then there were cadres in the British civil service. The administrative cadre, the professional cadre, the sub-professional cadre, the clerical cadre. Then there is a uniform grading system and salary structure. The pool system which uh, entails the deployability of staff in the various ministries. Staff can move from one ministry to the other. There is a merit-based uh, organized institution. Career progress in the British civil service is according to merit. You must be able to justify your advancement within the system. That uh, Trevelyan and North Coast report eliminated patronage system from the British civil service. It enthroned meritocracy. Then there is performance and uh, security of tenure. The structure of the British civil service is as follows. It has an administrative class. It has a professional class. It has an executive class. There is a clerical class. The British civil service is a highly efficient institution due to meritocracy, career stability, well delineated structures, and separation of politics from administration. In 2004-2005, the British Wear Airways, which is a public service organization, celebrated the first 100 years of the British Airways flying without a, an itch, without each. So that is a testimony to how efficient the British public service operates. Look at the uh, transport system in Britain. Look at the social welfare system in Britain. These are all public service uh, driven 
uh, organizations. They run very well. So, that is about uh, the United Kingdom. We now go to the public administration in France. France is another unitary state. Let's see the public administration in France. Background. The modern history of France administration could be traced to the 1789 revolution which overthrew monarchy. There was noticeable instability in the political system in France, but administration in France had always been stable. So this had helped the development of uh, France. In other words, despite the political instability, the administration had been able to uh, fill in the gap. It is a professional and highly trained, it has professional and highly trained and dedicated civil servants. France operates a unitary system with high centralization. The communes, the communes, and departments are closely supervised by representatives of the federal government, i.e. the prefect. Uh, there is a slight difference here between the British. In the British, where we said there is a central government and there are, there, there, there are uh, local authorities below the central government, there is direct election to elect people into the local levels in the British arrangement. In France, it is not exactly the same. The lower level derives its uh, personnel, it derives its uh, responsibilities from the central government. So it's more centralized, it's just an agent, agency of the central government. They are led by what they call prefects. The structure, the ministry performs the functions of government, i.e. foreign affairs, justice, education, health, etc. The ministry is organized into three units. There is a cabinet minister of about 12 persons, which performs both political and administrative uh, functions. There is the direction. This direction is like a directorate. It is headed by a director which performs administrative duties and representative duties and represents the ministry in parliament committees. Then there is consultation and control. These are various consultative councils and inspectorates. The field services, that's local administration in France. There are 90 departments uh, in number. They are headed by prefects, like I earlier said, who is a representative of the federal, or the cent oh, sorry, the central government, not federal. It has our own disment a division of the department supervised by sub-prefect, who is under the main prefect. There are 45 number in all. There is the canton, a subdivision with 3,000 numbers. Then there is the commence, this one is com communes, like communes, subdivision of the canton. There are 38,000 in all. Let us look at the French civil service. It is organized into four grades. The structure is into four grades. There is the core prefectural, there is the core de minis, there is the administrative and civil direction, then there is the perform, there is, uh, sorry, let me go over that again. They are, the French civil service is divided into four grades, grades A, B, C, and D. Grade A, consists of graduates, which are subdivided into that. Grade B consists of secretaries, the administrator who perform policy implementation. Grade C consists of agents du bureau, they, are technical and they perform technical and routine functions. Grade D consists of stenographers who perform technical and routine functions too. The French civil service uh, reform of 1946 distributed all civil servants according to this categorization. Entry into the French civil service is by competitive examinations, just like we saw in Britain, and relevant qualifications. That 1946 reform of the French civil service introduced democratization and unification. The same reform established the National College of Administration 
as a progressive institution for specialities in the foreign service, in general administration, economic administration, and social administration. The French, one distinctive feature of the French civil service is that the French civil service allows civil servants to participate in politics, unlike the British system. They can con even contest elections. If they go for political duties, they are entitled to leave of absence and they return to the civil service after such political tours. But one thing we should also know here is that French system had developed a separate and uh, advanced administrative law which govern public the relationship between public institutions and the citizens separate from its constitutional law which governs the political structure and the ordinary citizens so this is able to uh, this has enabled the participation of civil servants in politics without being major uh, damage to the French political cum administrative institutions. We have considered the public administration in Britain and in France. These are two unitary states. Now let us go into federal states. Federal states, the characteristic of a federal state is that it's a federal government and there is a state government below it, each derive their powers and authorities from the constitution. Each remain autonomous within its sphere of jurisdiction. So this is the major distinctive, distinctive uh, feature of federal state from the unitary that we have looked at. Let us look at public administration in the United States of America. The United States of America emerged from emigrants from England, from Europe, and other areas, including slaves that were taken away from Africa. The USA was established as a union of federation of 50 states and a federal district, the Washington District of Columbia. The USA operates a federal constitution, i.e. power is shared between the federal and state levels of government. I have explained that. The Constitution of the United States of America is a written constitution. The laws are codified in a single document. That constitution is a ground norm from which all structures, all functionaries of government and all authorities derive their powers. That's unlike the constitution, unwritten constitution of the United Kingdom. The political institution in the United States is structured as follows. You have the Congress. The Congress is the legislative body in the United States of America. It is made up of the Senate and the House of Representatives. Each state has two senators serving a CCR term. There is a total of 435 members in the American House of Representatives. The, then that is the legislative arm of government in the U.S. In the executive, you have the federal executive. The federal executive is headed by the president. The president is a very, very powerful institution. He is described as the most powerful office in the world. The American president, uh, president started in 1935. It is composed of 14 departments and a number of agencies. There are other independent agencies and commissions. Let me emphasize that the office of president in the United States is, is so powerful. When we were looking at uh, the United Kingdom the other time, we said the parliament was dominant, that the parliament was very powerful. In the American system, it is the president that have the, such enormous powers. Alongside, so the... Uh, civil service in Britain is built along the 14 departments or agencies of government and the presidency. So side by side the civil service there are other independent agencies and commissions, extra ministerial departments. You have the United States Postal Service, you have the public corporations, the boards, 
and the foundations. That is for the federal. Let's look at the states under the United States of America. Every state has a written constitution with three branches of government. There is the legislature in each state, the executive and the judiciary. All states, except Nebraska, has bicameral legislature. So there are two houses in each of the states in the United Kingdom. All the states also have their judicial system. Each state has its own judicial system structure up to the Supreme Court. The question is, what does the Federal Supreme Court, uh, what role does it perform in the United States? The elementary study of political science, uh, the, the Federal Supreme Court is primarily set up to adjudicate, to resolve disputes between the federal level of government and the state, simplicity. It's only in our system here, yeah, we shall see later, that uh, the Supreme Court will go into, into chieftaincy matter, will go into, but essentially, the federal Supreme Court is supposed to resolve disputes between the federal and the state authorities. The local governments in the United Kingdom, there are 78,218 local government units in the United States. They consist of 3,044 counties, 18,519 municipalities, 16,991 towns, 15,781 school districts, and 23,885 non-school districts, the American Civil Service. Let's look at the American Civil Service. It operates largely on the spoiled or patronage system until recently. Meritocracy became noticeable after 1883. Uh, there was also a reform in the American British uh, American Civil Service. The Arch Act of 1939, which banned civil servants from partisan politics. Unlike the French system, in America, civil servants are banned from part political partisanship. The Civil Service Reform Act of 1978 streamlined the procedure of removing civil servants. There were so ten, tenure uh, security. The merit pay for middle level managers was stipulated. It was, uh, then there was a creation of senior executive service. There was protection for whistle blowers. So uh, this is, these are the features of the American public administrative system. Uh, shortly, we shall look at, uh, in the next session, we'll be looking at the Nigerian uh, Federation and its public administration. But before we do that, let's just briefly run over public corporations. In addition to the mainstream civil service in the three countries we have studied, Britain, France, and uh, United States of America, there are public corporations that does not operate outside the usual bureaucracy. They are set up to perform specific public service duties outside the mainstream of the civil service. In Britain, for example, you have the British Forestry Commission, you have the British Central Electricity Board, the BBC, the British Broadcasting Corporation, and so on. Types of public corporations also they could be statutory and they are created by law. They could be state-owned. They could be mixed economy. The management of public corporations is under executive which is which comprise uh, executive boards. There are also policy boards. The control of corporate uh, co corporations. You have ministerial control. The appointments of board members, the chairman, are done by the minister. There is policy directives, then specific control. There is parliamentary control. They are they, they are accountable to parliament. There is public com control, e.g the Public Complaints Commission, the Ombudsman, which listens to complaints and grievances from the people against such public co cooperation. They are legal framework. They could be sued because they are created by law. They can sue and they can be sued. So these are the, uh, we have looked at public administration in practice. We looked at the British system. We looked at the French system for unitary states. We looked at the American system for federal states. We also looked at 
public corporation. In the next session, we'll be looking at public administration in Nigeria. Thank you very much.